So on today's video, we have an EasyGo RXV. My neighbor hit me up last night and said his uh, headlights were not working. And if I could take a look at them. So I was figuring maybe we can do that on today's video. Without further ado, let's get it started. So like I mentioned, this is a easy go RXV. Um, it's just got some low profile wheels and tires on it. I think it's a good looking little cart here. Little back seat on there. Um, he said it had like a Bluetooth speaker here. I don't know what this is. He keeps saying he's gonna maybe put another Bluetooth on here or something. Uh, it's got like a little light right here in the corner. And it's controlled by one of these switches here. I think it's that one. It is. Kind of like a little dome light. Kind of a neat little idea there. But the headlights do not work on it. So I want to get the headlights on it for him working today. See what's wrong with it. Might not be much of anything. Might just be a blown fuse. I don't know. It's December 8th, South Carolina. I love South Carolina for the simple fact that it's still in the 70s, upper 70s at least, and uh, it's not cold. So, yep, perfect day. Leave the doors open here. I don't have to turn the air conditioner on. I don't have to turn the heater on to just do something. So, let's get the seat pulled off, and let's start diagnosing that switch to see if we have power right there. First thing I'm going to check is power across all the batteries here. Driving it in, we have 50, 50.1 volts. Let's check each individual battery here. 12.32, 12.59, 12.60, 12.56. .12 this is the switch for the headlight down here. Let me just put it in neutral. Let's see if we can find continuity to which battery each one of these lugs Sorry, each one of these lugs are connected to. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. So it looks like this back lug is connected down here. Let's just pull this switch out here to begin with. This is the switch we got here. Let's check continuity of the switch. Continuity now. And no continuity. So the switch is good. If the switch was bad, we wouldn't have continuity when it's on. The beeping noise lets us know we have continuity. And when we turn it off, there's no continuity. So it lets us know that it passes through and the switch is good. We have another issue. That's our issue. Look at how corroded this is. Man, this is nasty. So here we're gonna do chopping all of these wires off right here, chopping all the wires off back there, and then uh, butt connecting them with some heat shrink butt connectors. Might make a little bit more sense there. Uh, that's not getting a full connection, it's basically eat through there. And it's probably the battery acid overcharging, and it's getting through this right here, and it's um, eating it up. So, yeah, that's nasty. This blue wire and this red wire has not been connected to anything in here. Those strip back. Those strip back these right here. And I'm gonna just tie them up here just before we put any kind of butt connectors or anything on it to make sure everything is legit or as it should be. I 
connect those two wires there. And I'm gonna pull the switch up. We have headlights, they're working again. And there was just a plug down below that was completely corroded. Let's check and see if we have tail lights now. We do, we have tail lights. All right, so give me a knee saver right here. After I crimp them down, I like to just give them a little small yank. Even though nothing's underneath the cart's gonna be yanking on them. So I went ahead and I stripped these right here back. I guess you could take these and put wire tape on them if you want. Uh, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and put butt connectors on here just in case uh, they wanna hook anything up later on down the road. They will be able to. Um, butt connectors are cheap. I think I got a bag of 100 of these um, with the heat shrink for like eight or nine dollars. If you need butt connectors, I'll put a link in the description below where I got these uh, done. Once we get them all butt connected, we're gonna try to put them back in some split loom if it'll fit. I don't think it's gonna fit with all of these butt connectors in there. We're gonna wire tie it up under the bottom of the cart, try to make it look a little bit better and make sure it doesn't snag on anything when he's riding the golf cart. Might throw some some uh, black tape on there here, electrical tape, to cover it all up before we put it back underneath the golf cart and wire tie it as well. All right, that's done. The headlights are now working on the golf cart. Tail lights are now working as well. So that's good to go. He had mentioned to me back in the day about a mirror or a set of mirrors for the cart. So let me see what I have and we might put a mirror on here as well. All right, so let's take this mirror out here. I thought I was gonna need a razor blade, but I don't. Okay, there you go. This is the mirror itself here. Got some foam on both sides. Large uh, wide mounting bracket there. You have your instructions here, pretty simple. You have some L brackets right here. When you're installing these mirrors here, these threads are left hand threads. So put it through the bracket here. When you go to set it on the mirror, you're gonna screw to the left. So lefty tighty, righty loosey. Do this however you like to do it. I like to put tape down in case I'm gonna mark any of my surfaces. I can just mark the tape. Tape is a lot cheaper than um, having a scratch or something, you know, on the, the cart frame or whatever. I'm just measure these two uh, from the outside to the outside. It's 31 and a half. So we're looking at, is that 31, is that 30 and three quarters? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Or 15 and three quarters is the half. So that's the center. So now we need to measure outside of here to outside of there. It's gonna be 16 and almost a half. It's like 16 and three eighths. Uh, let's just say 16 and a half. So 16 and a half is gonna be eight and a quarter. Next we can and so I can go ahead and remove that screw. a lot better well guys that pretty much concludes today's video uh if i could say anything this can happen to anyone it could happen to club car easy go yamaha this was at fault here and i believe this had a lot to do with the battery uh, over boiling with charging 
causing it to corrode and rust out. So underneath the golf cart looked fine, but this right here was pretty bad. This is the, one of the main reasons when we went ahead, I wanted to check the continuity of the switch itself. As you notice, we didn't just start throwing parts at it to see if we can fix things. We tried to diagnose it the best we could. Now I maintained this guy's a yard for him during the summertime. It's another thing I do here. And uh, he always mentioned to me he was wanting a review mirror. So we got him a review mirror today. He didn't ask for that. I just gave him that. He doesn't even know it yet, but I'm gonna go return this golf cart to him just a little bit. And uh, maybe we'll see it again on the channel. I'm not sure. It's a good looking little cart, little RXV. I'm not a big fan of these. However, I like the fender well that you have in these. And I love to sit one of these right here down on air if possible, but I like this. Anyways, that concludes today's video, guys. Until next time, we'll see y'all later.